In this video, we're going to discuss the experiments that define the structure of DNA from Shargaff, Rosalind Franklin, as well as Watson and Crick, and then we will review DNA structure. By the end of this video, you should be able to state the major experimental results that allowed scientists to elucidate the structure of DNA, as well as describe the chemical structure of DNA. So one of the first major findings that helped to elucidate the structure of DNA came from Shargaff in 1949. He found that in DNA from any organism, the amount of A was always equal to the amount of T, and the amount of G was always equal to the amount of C. Although the base composition varied between species, the amount of the purines, A and G, was always equal to the amount of the pyrimidines, T and C. These became known as Shargaff's rules. So our next major important finding came from Rosalind Franklin. Um, her work was done between 1951 and 1953, and she used a technique called X-ray diffraction. So basically, she took a beam of X-rays and focused them on a sample of DNA. This led to the diffraction of that X-ray beam, and that diffraction pattern could be captured on a photographic plate. This is a picture of the actual um, film that she got from this experiment. And what you can see is that this makes an X pattern. So she could discern several different things from this pattern. First, that X shape indicates that DNA is a helix. Second, she also knew that there had to be some kind of repeating patterns in the DNA. And specifically, those repeating patterns had to involve measurements of 0.34 nanometers, 3.4 nanometers, and 2.0 nanometers. And finally, she could also discern that the bases were stacked like the rungs of a ladder. So next comes the famous Watson and Crick. So Watson and Crick were awarded the Nobel Prize for building um, the first model of the actual structure of DNA. However, it's important to note that they actually used Franklin's data to make this, to build this model. So Franklin's data was given to Watson and Crick by her colleague Maurice Wilkins without her permission. And Watson, Crick, and Wilkins were all awarded the Nobel Prize for their experiments, their work towards modeling the structure of DNA, whereas Franklin's contribution was not acknowledged. So this is the model that they built of the structure of DNA. So now let's discuss something about that actual DNA structure. So first, in the DNA, as we've already described, there is base pairing. So adenine always bonds with thymine, and guanine always bonds with cytosine. Now this matches Shargaff's rules because, as you remember, the amount of A was always equal to the amount of T, and the amount of G was always equal to the amount of C. And you'll notice that these base pairs are connected by hydrogen bonds, two in the case of adenine and thymine, and three in the case of guanine and cytosine. So let's review what the structure of a nucleotide is. If you remember, a nucleotide is composed of a nitrogenous base, a 5-carbon sugar, in the case of DNA, deoxyribose, as well as a phosphate group. And remember also that DNA has direction. The 5' prime end has a phosphate group that is attached to the 5' prime carbon of that nucleotide, whereas the 3' prime end has a 3' prime hydroxyl group that is attached to the 3' prime carbon of this nucleotide. And if we look at the picture of a DNA double helix, what you can see is that the bases are, in fact, stacked like rungs of a ladder. We do have a helical structure, and the two chains are oriented in opposite directions. So one chain runs from 5' prime to 3' prime in this direction, while the other chain is anti-parallel, running from 5' prime to 3' prime in the opposite direction.
And you'll also notice those characteristic measurements that Rosalind Franklin found. First, 0.34 nanometers corresponds to the distance between bases in the double helix. 3.4 nanometers corresponds to one complete turn of the helix, so basically bringing the helix back into the same position. This one turn is comprised of 10 base pairs, which is 0.34 nanometers times 10. And finally, the width of the entire double helix is 2 nanometers. So here you see a radius of 1 nanometers, but the diameter is 2 nanometers, which was the third measurement that Rosalind Franklin found. And if you'll remember, DNA also has two grooves. First, we have a narrower minor groove and then a much wider major groove. These grooves are very important for allowing proteins to interact with the DNA and move along the grooves. And you'll notice the bases are found on the inside of the double helix, whereas the outside of the double helix is composed of that sugar phosphate backbone. And as you recall, phosphates are very, very negatively charged, making the DNA a negatively charged molecule. And that ends this video.